Imagine, you're settling in for the night with your family and your doorbell rings. You live in a safe area, away from the high crime city, so you don't think twice about opening the door. Then boom, your life is taken. Tom Clements, the head of Colorado Department of Corrections, would be shot dead at the front door of his El Paso County home. It's not often that you hear of a former inmate exacting revenge of the person in charge of the prison system where they were held, but that's exactly what investigators believe happened. But look at what led up to this incident, why it occurred, who was responsible, and the dramatic ending to the story. March 13th, 2013 was the day of the murder of this lifelong public servant. Tom Clements worked for Missouri Department of Corrections for most of his career, starting in 1979 and working his way up the ranks. He retired from the state of Missouri in 2011, and at that time he was the director of adult institutions. Like many who retire from state employment, they return to the workforce and collect their pension at the same time. Clements would move to Colorado and was hired as the executive director of the Colorado Department of Corrections. He was in this role for two years prior to his death. Now let's take a look at the suspect in the attack, Evan Ebel. Ebel grew up in Lakewood, Colorado, a suburb of Denver. It was reported that he grew up in a privileged home, but issues with his behavior would begin at an early age. He would be sent to a boot camp program in Samoa when he was a teenager. This would not change his behavior, and at 19 years old, he would soon be sent to prison for felony menacing, robbery, and assault. His sentence was eight years in Colorado Department of Corrections. While in prison, he would earn another conviction for assault on prison staff. What happens in prison when you assault staff? Administrative segregation. This is where he spent most of his time in prison due to his behavior. While in prison, he gained the nickname Evil. It was reported that he had 28 disciplinary write-ups. He told one female correctional officer that he would kill her if he ever saw her on the streets and make her beg for her life. In prison, he would join the 211 Crew, a white supremacist gang. He had all the tattoos to match his allegiance. As with most inmates, they aren't locked up forever. Ebel finished his prison term and was released from Sterling Correctional Facility in January 2013. I'm not sure he had any chance of successfully returning to society. It would be only two months until he would be suspected in this heinous crime. But it didn't start with the prison director. Unfortunately, another life would be taken prior to Clements. Two days prior, a pizza delivery driver, Nathan Leone, was lured to a remote location and ordered at gunpoint into the trunk of his own car. Weirdly, Ebel made Leon make a recorded statement denouncing the prison system. The statement said, In short, you treated us inhumanely, and so we simply seek to do the same. We take comfort in the knowledge that we leave your wives without husbands and your children fatherless. You want to deploy the mad scientists? Well, they will be your Frankenstein. Leon would be killed after he recorded the message. Ebel would take the pizza delivery paraphernalia and would use it as his disguise two days later. The scene of the crime is the affluent Higby Estates neighborhood in Monument, Colorado. The home was about 30 minutes from downtown Colorado Springs. Showing up at the home and ringing the doorbell, the killer would then shoot and kill Clements. The police were able to get a description of the vehicle in the area that matched with Ebel's Cadillac and put out a nationwide APB. A deputy in Montague County, Texas, would unfortunately be his next victim. Deputy James Boyd would pull over Ebel nearly 675 miles away from the crime scene. He would open fire, striking the officer in the chest and head. Luckily, the deputy's bulletproof vest would stop the first two rounds. The other bullet would only graze his head. Ebel would flee and end up in a high-speed pursuit with law enforcement. They had no intention of letting him get away. Ebel's car would crash into a semi-truck, causing unrecoverable damage to the front end. He would exit the vehicle, likely knowing what his fate would be. He fired at officers, but this time he would be the one taking the bullets. Police would end his crime spree here. He would be transported to a local hospital and would be taken off life support there. Although the manhunt was over, there were still plenty of unanswered questions. An inquiry into the incident was ordered by government officials, which would uncover several errors in a possible larger conspiracy. The first major error was a clerical mistake made by staff in Fremont County. In 2008, Ebel was convicted of assaulting prison staff. He was sentenced to an additional four years in prison. Instead of entering the sentence as consecutive, it was entered as concurrent, meaning it could be served alongside his current sentence instead of after. Ebel was released from prison four years early than was intended. Quite a mistake. After the crime, Ebel's ties to the 211 crew were investigated further, 
In a 77-page report put together by the Texas Rangers, they said that Ebel was directed and ordered by the leaders of the 211 crew to conduct the crime. Other agencies downplayed the criminal conspiracy and believed that Ebel acted alone. Several high-ranking members of the gang had communicated with Ebel in the days prior to Clement's murder. It was also reported that prison informants had worn wires in order to obtain information from incarcerated gang members. 211 Crew still operates to this day, and in 2017 it was estimated to have around 1,000 members. It was formed in 1995 in the Denver County Jail. When this crime occurred, there was a warrant for Ebel's arrest. Following his release from prison, he was placed on a GPS monitor as a condition of his parole. Five days before the murder of Clement, he had removed his GPS monitor without authorization. On the day of the murder, parole agents did a home visit and determined he was in violation. A warrant was sought at that time. Sadly, it took four days for his parole agent to get the alert. Following the incident, Colorado DOC said that agents are now required to respond in two hours, a significant shift. On a strange note, the governor at the time, John Hickenlooper, was old friends with the father of Evan Ebel and had a personal relationship with him. Everyone has a mother, even the most wicked among us. Ebel's mother would say, So even though he is depicted as depraved, evil, we know a different person who is loving, kind, thoughtful, generous, and sensitive to many in his family and to his friends. At the memorial service for Tom Clements, Governor Hickenlooper would say, it was a belief that he had at the core of his person, that anyone could be redeemed. He was, without question, one of the most remarkable people I've ever known in my life. Let me know in the comments if you believe Ebel acted alone, or was this a bigger criminal conspiracy? Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new content. As always, see you next time.